You know, they'll say, What if you back? Color any? You're about to say that. They'll say they gave you one and use one to collect one from. This is not a God. God will give you and add to it. His blessings make rich and add no sorrow. It's not a, okay, if you have A, you can't have B. No. He says, I'll give you A and I'll give you B. Because why? You realize that A and B are not for you. They are for me. This morning, the topic is light in darkness. Someone say to your neighbor, light in darkness. You don't sound convinced. Can you say it again? Light in darkness. Okay, the context of this topic, um, as a result of Adam's sin, we live in a fallen world, and that's why we're surrounded by so much darkness. But Jesus came so that you and I can live above everything we tend to face. So I quickly go to Romans 5 verse 12. It says, Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because all have sinned. I go on to 17. He says, For if by one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one. 2 Timothy chapter 3. He says, But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. Matthew 24, 6-8 it says, and you would hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet, for nations will rise against nations. So don't be surprised when you're hearing all the kinds of things you see on the news. And kingdoms against kingdoms. And it says there will be famines, pestilences, earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of the sorrow. But well, may I bring you what the Lord says. He says, these things are spoken to you, John 16, 33. He says that in me, you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. And what does God want us to do? Isaiah 60, verse 1 to 3. He says, arise, shine, for your light will come. For your light will come, has come, and the glory of the Lord will rise on you. No, is risen upon you. For behold, what? Darkness shall cover where? The earth. Are we on the earth? And not only that, it gets even worse. It says what? Deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you. It's a good place to say hallelujah. It's okay. It's okay. We're in church. We're not in a burial ground. We're in church. This is our victory. This is what we have. This is what we go out every day into the world to contest with. We come to church. Church is like a charging station where you come and recharge and go into Monday, Tuesday to Saturday and you go and be the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So we gather together all here, not to point our light in each other's eyes, but to get charged that we all as light may go out into the world to shine in the darkness. That's why we're in church. It's okay to clap. They're not clapping for me. They're clapping for him. He made you and I the light. He made you and I the light. And you and I didn't deserve it, but he still made us light. That's why the angels keep wondering. They are crying holy every day and they are crying holy. And they're like, who are these humans? They are so mindful of them. They can't understand it. The humans today, they listen to you. Tomorrow they won't listen. But yet you still love them. How deep this love is, Father. But yet we will not let you down. Because we put our trust in what you want us to do, Lord. So let's put these definitions in context. What is light? We all know that light has no business with darkness, all well and true. Light is even over darkness. But, the, but, but for the context of this topic, we're talking about being light in darkness. 
So what is light? Light is a natural agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible to illuminate or lighten up. Light symbolizes holiness, goodness, knowledge. Please note that word knowledge. Note that word knowledge. Wisdom, grace, hope, and God's revelation. Please note the words knowledge and revelation. God is not just a light or a kind of light. God is light himself. You hear that? God is not just a light or a kind of light. He is light himself. Light signifies God's presence and glory. So what is darkness? Darkness is the total absence of light. Darkness is symbolic with wickedness or evil. Dark darkness symbolizes sin, death. Evil, sickness, disease, depression, poverty, frustrations, disorganized systems, separation from God and everything that is of the devil. Wherever there's darkness, there's no sight, lack of illumination, and lack of clarity. Darkness hides and conceals what ought to be known, revealed, or accessed. I was beginning to go into the topic. Genesis 1, verse 1 to 5. I'm a big believer and see the word for yourself. So you can listen to me, it's okay. And I pray you'll be able to see the scriptures as well. But when you see the word for yourself, there's something about understanding and seeing the word that catches you and causes you to have a revelation that you run with and no one can ever take from you. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep and the spirit, darkness was where? on the face of the where the deep darkness was on the face of the where the deep it was not on the surface the bible says darkness was on the face of the deep that is it was embedded there's something about when it's something on the surface and when something is on the deep it's another level the bible says deep darkness the people don't be surprised when people cannot you cannot fathom why people will do certain things it's not their fault. The devil has blinded and is very intentional and strategic. And even in these last days, even more intentional and more strategic, not the obvious ways you think. But what does it say? It says, God saw. It says what? It says, and God said, let there be light and there was light. Now, after God said, guess what he now said? The Bible now says, God now saw the light. So you will say certain things, but my question to you is that do you see what you said? It's okay to ask your neighbor, have you seen what you've been saying? So I say I'm an overcomer. I just say because church says, let's say I'm an overcomer. But have you seen yourself as an overcomer? And the Bible says, and God saw the light, I was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. But that's not where I'm going to today. 1 John 1, 5 to 7, it says, This is the message which we have heard from him and declared to you, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. So God has no business. And you will come to understand why it says that in him is no darkness at all. Psalm 139, and please, Read this very carefully. Psalm 139, 11 to 12. It says, If I say, surely darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be what? Light about me. Continue. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you, but the night shines as what? The day. Continue. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. Somebody did not hear that. The darkness, the so-called miserable, worst, lose your life situation and the light are both alike to God. So let earth be wanting to fall down and come down. Heaven doesn't shake. Everything still remains. And that for me assures my heart that no matter what I go through, in fact, the deeper the darkness, 
the greater the light. Some of you here will bear witness that the greatest disappointments you've been through have been some of your greatest source of strength in life. Some of the worst circumstances, had the enemy known, you shouldn't have been through that situation. Because what he brought out of you, nobody can take it away from you. There are many people you see walking and say, this person, why are you like the way you are? You don't understand what they've been through. You don't understand situations which they've had to face. If you understood it, then you know why they are the way they are. That brother, he just dances anyhow, carelessly, doesn't even care. You don't know what God has delivered him from. That sister, is she the only one carrying God on her head? Every day, she's the only one there. You don't know what God has brought that sister out of. Two of them, so committed. They just follow God day after day. You don't know where they've been. You don't know their story. The darkness. But we are called to be light in darkness. What is our identity as light? The Bible says in Colossians 1, 13 to 14, it says God has delivered us from the power of darkness. God has delivered you from the power of darkness. God has delivered somebody here from the power of darkness. This day, God wants to deliver you. Maybe you're still stuck in some kind of darkness. God says, I want to deliver you from the kingdom of darkness and the power of darkness. Into where? Into the kingdom of his son, kingdom of light. One that doesn't tell you, you know, they'll say, Wafi Kogba, Kolowaini. You're about to say that. I don't know if I got that, you're about correct. They'll say they gave you one, I'll use one to collect one from. This is not a God. God will give you and add to it. His blessings make rich and add no sorrow. It's not a, okay, if you have A, you can't have B. No. He says, I'll give you A and I'll give you B. Because why? You realize that A and B are not for you. They are for me. The Bible says in 1 Peter 2, 9 to 10, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, special people, Look at all of these things. That you may proclaim the praises of him who what? Called you out of where? Da da darkness into where? Not light. Oh. Into what? Marvelous light. You and I are a marvelous light. Hi. Don't clap for me. Clap for God. God delivered you. Forget whatever you think you see of yourself today. And you think that I'm not. You are in light. Whenever God sees you, when God is looking from heaven, he sees what? Christ over you. And that's why he can look at you and say, oh, you, I'm calling you to do this. And you say, me, no, Lord, it can't be me. I stammer. Lord, it can't be me. I'm an adulterer. Lord, it can't be me. I do this and do that. But God said, you don't know what I see. I call those things that are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. God is delivering somebody in this place this morning. God is delivering somebody in this place this morning. I hope you are being blessed. I hope so. Let's hit the nail on the head now. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 6. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 6. Audiovisual, please. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 6. It says, For it is God who what? commanded the bible says it is god who what commanded light to what to shine out of darkness continue who has shone in our hearts to give the light continue of the knowledge of the glory of god in the face of jesus christ let me read in another version and then we break this down I read in the easy version. It says, God is the one who said, let light shine in the dark. And is the one who has caused his light to shine deep in the inside of us. Because of that, we know how grateful and powerful God is. We see that his power shines brightly in Christ's face. Let me read a message for you. It says, remember, our message is not about ourselves. We are proclaiming Jesus Christ the master. All we are his messengers, errand runners from Jesus for you. It started when God said, light up the darkness. 
God didn't say just go into the dark. He said, light up the darkness. And our lives are filled with light as we saw and understood God in the face of Christ, all bright and beautiful. So let's break this down. The first thing God said there was that he commanded the light to shine out of darkness. Now, what is a command? A command is a directive. He wasn't begging. He wasn't asking. He wasn't pleading. He wasn't saying maybe, maybe no. He commanded the light. And why could he do that? Remember, he's gone down to the deepest of the deepest, the darkest of the darkest. And what has he done? He has dealt with everything that has to do with what darkness is for you and I. And he's, been, he's now been raised to the highest of the highest. So he had to go so low into the depths of hell for you and I. That no matter the darkness you and I face, God is like, I've seen that before. That's chicken change. I don't know what somebody is going through in the house this morning. Or you know someone is going through something. Tell them the light shall shine out of that darkness. Encourage them. After the service, send them a message, light will shine out of this darkness. You may think I caused it. You may think this happened. But God says if you realize that you are the light of the world, you are the one who have called light, my light will shine in this darkness. And when it shines, I will take all of the glory. What does light to shine out of darkness really mean? It means... For you to have vision, to come out of a place where there's lack of vision. It means there's an abundance that will come out of a place of lack. It means there's, no, there's clarity that will come out of a lack of clarity. It means hope out of a place of despair. It means insights and revelations out of a place of lack of insights and revelation. May God between now and the end of the year give you insights and revelations for your life that you would know what you ought to do. You will have an understanding of times and seasons. You will make decisions that are beyond and confound even your own wisdom. I love that verse that speaks about the fact that, and I use it to pray a lot. It says that God will soak you in the depth of the riches of his wisdom and knowledge that your judgments will be what? Unsearchable. Your judgments will be unsearchable. Your ways will be past finding out. They'll be saying, what, what is he doing that I'm not doing? What is that thing about that person? What makes them special? It is God. It is the Holy Spirit. It is the insights and the revelations. You sleep and you wake up and know that this is what I ought to do today at work. This is the business decision I ought to make. This is the decision I ought to take in the place of ministry. Father, we pray for insights and revelations that are beyond the understanding of men. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. As we begin to round up, it says to give the light no, so, so he says, God has shone. Now, now, all of this that I've said, this is, the, this is where the rubber hits the road. Because yes, okay, I hear you. I'm light and darkness is good for me to declare it. But do you remember how you and I got saved? The Bible says we confessed with our mouth. Did we stop there? After confessing, what happened? We believed in our heart. So it's not, it's not just okay to say, well, I'm light in darkness, I'm the light of the world. You must what? Believe it in your heart. And you and I know this heart is where a lot of the issues happen. The Bible says what? It says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? The Bible also lets us know that as a man thinks in where? His heart, so is he. You cannot rise above the way you think. I'm sure you've heard that people say that and they say it in the world, say it in business, say it so many times. You cannot rise above the way you think you are. You cannot keep having a mindset of lack or it's not enough. I can never do it. And you think you'll do it. That's why God comes to encourage us a lot of the times with words. So this thing is a heart thing. That's why God now shines his light where? In your heart. 
He shines the light in our hearts. And when he shines it in our hearts, what does he do? He causes you and I to then behold who? Jesus Christ. Because Jesus is the gateway to God. So that's why we tell us, looking unto him, the author and the finisher of our faith. That's why in the Old Testament, which was trying to show us what Jesus was going to represent, all they needed to do was look at that serpent whom they hung. And the Bible says, the minute they beheld the serpent, those who were sick were healed. How much more Jesus? And the Bible is telling us that God has caused this light. He commanded light to shine out of darkness. And he now caused what? This same light to shine where? In your heart. Because he knows that once your heart has caught it, your eyes have caught it as well. That's why a lot of the time people say, I didn't even know how I said what I said. Out of the abundance of the heart. The Bible says the mouth, what? Speaks. So what is in your heart? What is in your heart? And I sense God wanting to just shine his light into our hearts today. I sense God wanted to shine his light into our hearts today. It's a good time to pray that God shine your light in my heart today. Lord, shine your light in my heart today. Some of us are in situations confused and asking ourselves, God, what I ought to do? God says, I'm bringing you clarity this morning. God says, I want to bring you clarity. I want to bring you revelation and insight. God says, I want to solve those problems. Somebody has a long-standing issue. God says, this is chicken change for me because you know why? I just want you to know that I cause light to shine out of darkness. Look, they try to confuse you. They've gathered against you. But God says, don't, don't mind them. They don't know you are light. You can't be stopped. It may take a process, but let me tell you something. That light will shine. No matter how long you hide a candle, if you put on the candle, the candle just comes on because the light remains every time. And let me tell you the beautiful thing about all of this and what God was saying to me. God says, I'm not looking for individual lights in these last days. I'm looking for people who will connect to other lights because more lights that connect, it becomes a holistic light because if only my light was shining, then what benefit is it? And I come to church and I bamboozle you and I tell you the words and I lift up all these sermons and it seems like as if I've lifted up myself, then what point is it? God says, if nobody else's light shines, then you've wasted your time. But the reason why I've preached this word is that I myself will not be a castaway, but that my light will shine and your light will shine. That every time we come into church, the lights connect. And when my light meets your light, you'll be like, wow, my light is shining brighter. I'm going lower, but by, by seeing your light, my light has shone. And when I get out there, I'm encouraged because I remember the light that touched me on Sunday. And that's why we come to church. It's not a graveyard. It's a place of light. It's okay. You are clapping for God. It's fine. Let's clap for him. He deserves all the glory. He deserves all the glory. He deserves all the glory. Father, you deserve it. It all belongs to you. You are light. Father, you are light. And in you, there's no darkness. Lord, we remain the light. May the light keep shining, O oh God. And may we know that we are called to be light who shine in darkness. Even when we seem to fail, we will not let that disturb us. We will not let it discourage us. We will keep marching as light for you, O oh God. And Father, we bless your name. Thank you for your word. Lord, we will not just be hearers, but we, we, we all, we all, we all, we all, even me, the vessel whom you've used this morning, will be doers and sharers of your word. In Jesus' name, amen.